And now for the reason why my FedEx guy hates me. These are two 80 pound hex rubber coated dumbbells from Cap Barbell that I bought off of Walmart.com. Hey everybody, today I wanted to talk about dumbbells. So dumbbells are really expensive. Of all the things that go in your gym, they probably are the most expensive thing to acquire a collection of other than maybe putting up a cable cross or something like that. So if you look at the hierarchy of things you can do to improve your fitness in terms of cost, the first is obviously doing body weight exercises, push-ups and air squats and things like that. You're using gravity and the mass of your body. You probably have a body. So that comes at very little to no cost. And then I think maybe the next best thing you can get is just a basic barbell set and a bench, even if you buy that stuff brand new, you can go to Dick's and get a barbell set for $200. You can buy a bench from a lot of sources for between $50 and $150 for a relatively decent flat bench. And uh, like anything, the sky's the limit. There are more expensive barbell sets and more expensive benches, but you can get into lifting for not a lot of money. And then really toward the end, when you've accumulated almost everything, you can start building up a dumbbell collection. So the difficulty with dumbbells is they're very expensive individually and I've seen solutions that I think are great where it's uh, like I think Bowflex maybe and these other companies make these things where you turn a dial and your dumbbells can adjust their weight and you can get a lot of different weight combinations for some money. I mean they're not cheap still, they, they're $500 or something like that so they cost a lot of money. And then building up an individual dumbbell collection is just super expensive. So I wanted to talk about my dumbbell collection, how I got it, and probably the way I would do it if I were doing it again today, all the lessons that I've learned along the way. So let me go ahead and we'll start taking a look at my dumbbells. So starting here low on my rack, what I've got is these, I guess they're cast iron, some sort of metal that's been painted. It's kind of got a powder coat on it. But one thing I want you to notice, and this happens to all of them, but if you look at my really super old ones, you'll see the paint chips off on these things. And you know, if you have worked out with these things in a gym or something like that, the more beat up they get, the more likely it is that this paint chips off. I have literally been at gyms where I'm doing workouts with these things and the paint chips are just flying off of these things like into my eyes and mouth. The thing is though, these cast iron dumbbells, this is the cheapest way to go. So you can get these, they don't cost a ton of money, but there's a couple problems. One again is the chipping problem that I mentioned. The other is that I don't like to lower dumbbells down gently. When I'm done with a set with dumbbells, I a lot of times just want to be able to drop them to the floor. I feel like that's the safest. If you're not getting some sort of benefit from the eccentric portion of your exercise or you know the, uh, the, the part where you're lowering weights, then why risk injury twisting and things like that? It's really easy to pinch a, you know, a disc or something like that if you're twisting awkwardly. Why would you do that when you can uh, just drop these things to the floor? The difficulty is that even if you have horse stall mats, if you have horse stall mats, you can drop them on the horse stall mats, you're probably fine. But if you have almost any other kind of flooring, like if I dropped them here where the carpet is, it would it probably eventually put holes in the carpet and might damage the dumbbells. And so for sure, if I dropped it on this wood, I mean, it would just ding this thing up like crazy. So that's where rubber coated dumbbells come in. And I've got a collection here. I've got some more coming in, but it starts basically with 25 pounds. And here's my 30s, 35s, and then goes up in five pound increments until I get to 60. And then I actually just today, the poor FedEx guys had to deliver these that are 80. And the reason I got these is kind of a, an interesting story. But what's the advantage of these? You can drop them on more surfaces without damaging them. You can clink them together at the top of your bench press without worrying about chipping off paint that's gonna end up in your mouth or your eyes or all over your face or something like that. And so to me, these are very superior, but again, they're more expensive and that is a consideration when you're talking about, you know, I, you have to buy a lot of these to round out a collection. I don't even have that big a collection, but I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. I've got 18 of the rubber coated ones and a whole bunch of the other ones too. I mean, this isn't even all of them. I've got them sitting around the house because like I'll do um, rotator cuff work with my five pounders in the living room and things like that. So it's a major expense. But these are better now. One thing I will say, and this is where I would do a lot of things differently. 
on this deadlift mat, but I dropped my rubber coated dumbbells on this thing and it really, it kind of scuffed it up and it actually put a dent in a couple of parts. So um, this is kind of, this is not great wood, but like here, there's actually a little dent here. I don't know if you can see it, but it actually dented it, <laughs> literally dented it. And so even the rubber coated dumbbells, if you're lifting heavy enough ones, will damage flooring. But for sure you can drop these on um, horse stall mat. And for the most part, if you drop them on concrete, you're probably not gonna hurt the dumbbell. If you drop a heavy enough one on concrete, you could crack the concrete though. But I prefer the rubber coated ones. Trouble is they're more expensive. Now, when I first started building this collection, all I would do is go to Dick's and buy whatever they had available at whatever price they were selling them at. Maybe check to see if they had a sale or something like that. But um, those ones over there, the big ones at the bottom, my 50 and 60 pounders are a brand called VTX, which I'm pretty sure I bought at Dick's. Very expensive to buy. They, they weren't cheap at all. And then the other ones, the little hex ones, I got those at a combination of getting them at Dick's, but also at um, Walmart.com and Amazon.com. I'm gonna strongly recommend, if you're buying free weights or anything weight related, look at Walmart.com. It's not always gonna be your best bargain, but most of the time it is. So what I found is on the rubber coated dumbbells, Walmart.com will sell them for about a buck 10 per pound. So for instance, if you're buying a 50 pounder, it should cost you about 55 bucks. The thing is, sometimes it's weird, you have to check these things. So they sell the cap rubber coated dumbbells both as pairs and as singles. Sometimes it's cheaper to buy two of the singles than it is to buy a pair. You have to research this. Other thing is Amazon.com sells these same things. Check all three sites. There's less rhyme or reason to this than you may think. The reason that I go directly from 60 pounds up to 80 is the 80 pounders for some reason were on sale for less than 10, uh, a buck a pound. And so everything else a buck 10 a pound. I think my um, 80 pounders were 70 four dollars or something like that they cost less than my 60 pounders and my 60 pounders for some reason when i bought them were more than a buck ten a pound so what i do is i comb these sites periodically and if i see it for less than a buck ten a pound i'll usually jump on it and buy it i don't know why that is it could be a mistake on their part or they just have a lot of inventory and they want to clear it out or maybe the profit margins are such that they could do it, but you'll see weird things like 50 pounders are normally priced, 55 pounders are way more than a buck 10 a pound, and then 60 pounders will be less than a buck 10 a pound. So it's like you have to look at each individual weight and then pick it out from there. And eventually, over the course of years, this does not represent one purchase for me, but over the course of years, you end up building up a collection. Now, again, this is super expensive, but dumbbell training, I'm, I'm a personal believer in it. I think that in a lot of ways, it's superior to barbell training. Kind of one of those things where between cables, dumbbells and barbells, they all have their place, but I feel like dumbbells are just way up there. Like if you have a choice between doing a barbell exercise or a dumbbell exercise, for fitness purposes, I'd recommend that you do the dumbbell exercise. Obviously, if you're a power lifter, who cares? You know, you might be doing it for general development, but you need to work out with a barbell. So, and I still believe in barbell work because you can really overload your muscles and you can use a lot more weight. I mean, sometimes I'm lucky to do half the total weight with dumbbells that I can do with a barbell. So for instance, if I can do a 225 pound um, uh, bench press, you know, I might have difficulty doing 260s with dumbbells. So it just is that way. So it works out all those stabilizer muscles and everything independently. Also with dumbbells, things like on the bench press, you, you can bring them together. So it gets you a little bit more activation in your pectorals. So it's just sort of its own animal. But over time, I've done this over the course of literally years, uh, accumulating these things and then you buy them. Someday, I guess I might like to have every weight of dumbbell between, you know, five pounds and a hundred pounds. But when you look at it, even at like the discounted Walmart prices, that's probably $2,500 or something like that. I mean, you know, right now I don't have a lot of use for those 80 pound dumbbells. Um, May, as I get stronger, I will. So I don't know. Uh, I just, I round them out. I buy a few here and there when I have a little bit of extra money, but they, the more they weigh, they start getting expensive. So for instance, I'd like to get some 70s 
and buying a couple of 70s is going to be 160 or 170 pounds. Nice thing is Walmart doesn't charge shipping if you buy more than I think $35. For sure they have been just an absolute blessing when it comes to buying weights. They don't require any type of membership like Amazon Prime. They'll ship you this stuff for free if you buy not very much stuff and especially when it's something like today the poor FedEx guy had to drop off two 80 pound dumbbells and it didn't cost me a penny in shipping. So uh, as you probably know, I'm a huge fan of Titan, but I've checked out the Titan price on rubber coated hex dumbbells. Walmart destroys them. So getting the cap barbell rubber coated dumbbells from Walmart is way cheaper than buying the ones from Titan. And I bought enough of these. They're in perfect shape when I get them. I have no issues with quality. They feel solid in my hands. The adjustable ones are appealing because you can save a lot of money buying them, but I think that there's just not this feeling of it being quite so solid in your hands. I'm not bad mouthing them. If you've got them, good for you. There are days when I wish I would have done that. I could have, you know, had the whole shebang covered for several hundred dollars instead of several thousand dollars. But there is something to be said for having actual individual dumbbells. So that's everything I know about dumbbells. If you want to add these to your gym, they are pricey. So try and save every penny you can with them. And again, I would check walmart.com first, check Amazon, especially if you have Amazon Prime, and then see if you can get these things shipped um, at no cost to you. And then build out your collection over time. Just you know, the, the smaller weighted ones, the ones that don't weigh so much, are relatively inexpensive. And then when you get up over, you know, 50, 60 pounds, then it's, you know, you're throwing away 100 or 200 or $300 a pop to get a pair of these things. So again, rough rule of thumb is a buck 10 per pound. So uh, if you can get them for less than that, I would say jump on them again. I really didn't have a need for my 80s right now. I don't have an exercise where I do 80 pounds with a dumbbell, I'm just sort of optimistic and feel like I'll get there someday, but they had some sort of pricing inefficiency, so the cost of it was much less than a buck ten a pound. Maybe they'll never fix it, um, but the price on these things change eventually. I think that it'll probably revert to a buck ten a pound like everything else does, but uh, I shy away from buying the ones that cost more than a buck ten a pound, and I try to jump on the ones that cost less than a buck ten a pound, and if it's at exactly a buck ten per pound, I buy it if I need it. So, have a great workout, everybody. We'll see you soon.